could, um, yes, Christine, thank you. If you could uh, go ahead and mute your phones if you're on Zoom. And uh, we're going to be in Leviticus chapter 15. And I'm going to do my best to get through the, Jackie, please, to get through the whole um, chapter. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer first and foremost. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Lord, thank you for this day of gathering us together, Lord. And, and as you, you say, wherever two or more are gathered, you are here in our midst. And Father, where you are, there is holiness, there's pureness, there is no sin in your, in your presence. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we can come to a place of refuge, away from our own fleshly desires, our own thoughts, Lord, our own, uh, the world and the, and the things of the world that, that are corrupt and and that are even falling apart to come to a place of hope and reassurance and, and peace and joy and contentment. Lord, I just thank you for this incredible time of being able to gather together in your word and at your feet. I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive all it is that you have for us through this um, Bible study. And Lord, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So go ahead and... Um, if you could open up your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter, I'm sorry, Ezekiel, <laughs> my mind's fried from all this um, cake and stuff. Oh. Uh, but go ahead and turn to Leviticus chapter 15, please. So Leviticus chapter 15 is uh, another chapter as we're learning about the, the cleanliness and we've learned about a lot of sacrifices and things of that nature for different kinds of skin diseases and um, we've learned about obviously how to handle those and how to be clean and not just that last week we talked about making sure the house is clean it's God's house right making sure that the house would have no mold or fungus or these kinds of things that would be in the land that was promised to Israel when they moved in and it was the Lord who had allowed those funguses to to drive out the enemy from those homes and and yet still desired us to clean those homes and so now we're going to get to a place that's uh, very, very near and dear, I think, to a lot of our hearts here is we, we live in a society that's very similar to many of the societies that, that were being forced out of the promised land, that were filled with debauchery, and that were filled with, with um, all kinds of uh, perversion and, and issues within the, their vain imaginations and having false gods and all kinds of things. And if we remember, this had rubbed off on the Israelites as they left Egypt and Moses was up talking to God, they didn't think he was coming back and they thought God wasn't watching. They thought God wasn't present. God wasn't there. They went ahead and took all of their gold and all of their, their, their um, silver and they melted it all together and they created a, a golden image of a golden bowl and they literally, and, and this is going to be a little bit graphic for some of you from, from a sexual nature, this message. So I just want to make sure everyone's prepared for that. And they had, they had literally an orgy. They had literally a, a festival of people indulging in their, in their, in their sensual pleasures. Um, when the Lord had said not to do this, it was one of the commandments. And here's Moses coming down with the commandments to have no graven image. And, and they, are, they are doing this, this one thing. And yet the Lord gave mercy and gave grace and found a way that they could be made holy and made clean and still continue the work he wanted to do with, in them. So as we're coming into that into this chapter of Leviticus chapter 15, I want us to keep that in the forefront of our mind of, of why there is a need to be made clean from these kinds of things. And so it says in verse 1 of chapter 15, Leviticus, The Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying unto them, When a man hath running issue out of his flesh, because of his, because the issue is he is unclean and this shall his uncleanness in his issue whether his flesh run with the issue and his flesh be stopped from this issue it is his uncleanness every bed wherein he lieth and he hath issue is unclean and every unclean wherein he sitteth shall be unclean and whosoever shall touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. And he that sitteth on anything whereon he satteth, that hath the issue, shall wash his clothes, bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. And he that toucheth, him, uh, toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue, uh, just a second, sorry guys, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean, until the evening 
and if he hath issue split, uh, spit upon him that is unclean. So if the person who's unclean with this issue, and what this issue is, I'm going to, again, get a little bit graphic here. Some believe it could be a form of gonorrhea, a form of sexually transmitted disease in which the man is leaking. And this is, a, a, again, similar to other diseases, contagious. And therefore, there's a process of staying away from anything. And wherever this issue and this fluid, whenever you hear issue in the Bible, it means fluid, typically representation of a, a, a sensual, sexual nature, fluid issue. And so this issue is leaking. And it says wherever it is, it's kind of gross, is, is unclean and dirty and should be clean. And anyone who even touches this will be unclean and therefore would have to wash themselves. Now, we're going to see that there's a special cleaning that the person who has the issue has to go through. But anyone who even comes in contact with this issue needs to bathe. And they're unclean until the night. They need to, there's a time of, of handling and, 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 and getting through, I should say not handling, but, but coming out of being, being touched by something unclean. And it's, you're not immediately clean. There's a waiting period, if you will, uh, to ensure you're clean. And when we think about that, as we've talked about with some of these other things, is that we're to have no, no um, fellowship with darkness. We're to have you know, no fellowship with corruption. In some of these things, even if you think you've scathed it and you, you, know, you just touched it, you brushed elbows with it, you're okay, there is a time to watch yourself. There is a time to be a, a confident and, and wait upon it to make sure this hasn't impacted. This, 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 this hasn't. Um, Steve, mute your phone, please. That, but, but this is. There's a time of waiting for this cleanness to come upon, and and uh, to ensure that there's no residuals left behind in our minds. You know, and we talked about that is be careful, little children, what you see, what you hear, the things you allow into yourself. It may take time for you to get back to that place where you are holy, where you are set apart and you're seeing God. That's okay, but take the time, right, to make sure that you're not affected by whatever you came kind of with. It's okay, so it says in verse 9 of Leviticus 15, And what saddle whatsoever he rideth upon, and hath issue, it shall be unclean. And so, whosoever touches anything that is under him shall be unclean until the evening. And he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes, bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. And whomsoever he toucheth that hath the issue, and hath not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So even just touching the person, um, the vessel, because they could touch and touch, you know, you're, it's, it's one of the, again, sorry for the graphicness of this, but many of the times when people get, get dysentery and get, get, you know, um, sickness from food poisoning, it's because the, the people that are in the, in the, the um, restaurant are not washing themselves after they've uh. gone to the bathroom. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but, but that gets on different places. So you, you may touch. They're touching things that have this bacteria. They're touching things that have this issue, if you will. And so it could be unclean. So we want to be careful about that. Um, and, of course, take time to, to cleanse and wash. Uh, and the vessel of earth... And the vessel of earth that he touches, which he hath issue, shall be broken, and every vessel of the wood shall be rinsed with water. Now, think of this. We come to God as, as, as unclean vessels. And the Bible tells us that we are to be reckoned dead and risen again, to be made clean vessels, right? Because no good thing can come out of a bad vessel, right? I'm not going to sit there and give you a dirty glass when you come to my house and say, here you go, and pour some water in, and you drink it, and you see lipstick on the side, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of gross, right? It's dirty. Not, not against you. <laughs> it could be anybody's lipstick, guests that came over. But, but anyways, it could be food or, or whatever, right? We want a clean vessel. So in this case, this bacteria, you don't see, you're not going to risk it. It can get into the clay. They said crash, smash the vessel. And then the wood, okay, you can rinse that. The wood will soak the cleansing, the hyssop, and the things that we know that are disinfectants and stuff like that we've talked about. It can be clean. So, okay, clean, clean the wood. Make sure before you reuse it. Um, and when he hath an issue is is cleansed in his issue he shall number himself seven days for the cleansing wash his clothes bathe his flesh with running water and shall be clean so okay so there's again the seven waiting day then the number seven is a number of completion 
and yet it's also a time that it would take to see if this issue would clear itself up, whatever this thing is. And again, um, on the eighth day, he's going to have to come back because the Lord considers this an uncleanness, that there needs to be a, a, a restoration of mind, heart, soul before you come into the presence of God. Remember what God said to Moses. He warned them if they come to the mountain and they come upon that mountain, him, the people, or the animals, if God hasn't made them clean, they would be devoured immediately, coming into God's presence. Nothing can come into God's presence and live unless it's holy and perfect, right? God cannot dwell with sin. And so there is this process, again, uh, a temporary process that the Leviticus people had to make themselves clean. And yet we should consider that the only reason we are clean, and by the way, you are clean because our high priest has made that sacrifice once and for all for, for any sin that you've entered into. I want to make that very, very clear. This is a shadow of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who died for all sin, including these other sins. So even the sick can come. Remember, Jesus sat down with the sick. He says, I've come not for those who don't need a physician, but for those that need a physician. Not for the righteous, but for those that need to be made righteous. And by the way, all need to be made righteous in Christ. Amen? And it's through his imputation, or his gifting, or his imparting to us righteousness that we can come to the presence of God Almighty. We can come boldly before the presence of God Almighty. Okay, so, so they would go through these sacrifices again in verse 14, that the eighth day he shall take unto him two turtle doves and two pigeon doves and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle at the congregation. And remember, what we're seeing here is they're not, they're not separated from fellowship like with the, with the, other, the other issue with leprosy. They, they're still amongst the people. They just couldn't come into fellowship with God. So there was this, this delay, this timing of separating them. And it says that on the eighth day, okay, the turtle doves, the Lord unto the tabernacle of the congregation and give unto them to the priest. And the priest shall offer them for one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord for this issue. Now, now this is the end of how to handle sexual transmitted diseases. Now, obviously, if the person's not clean, they would have to go through this again and again and again, and this would be a perpetual thing. And think about it. We have antibiotics. We have things now that people get that, that help them heal. And yet there are a lot of sexually transmitted diseases still to today that people can't overcome. Syphilis and AIDS still, there's no cure. Even though there's something that can kind of retard the process and it from killing you, you still have it, right? So, so in these times, can you imagine the, the suffering that many of these people would go through that would get this issue? And it, and it could even be, by the way, not necessarily a sexually transmitted disease. It could be a urinary tract infection. And, and, and I know friends uh, who are doctors who go to Hades and there's people there who are suffering for years with these horrible things. And it's a, it's a, it's a lot of pain when you have this. And, and there is a leaking literally out of, you know, I, and again, sorry for being graphic, but he said it was just amazing to see when they were healed, when they were able to come into the fellowship of God and be with people and be at peace because they're tormented from the sins. They're tormented from what caused them to have this issue, right? So we may think it's something small, but for whatever reason, this gets spread among among people who, who are tending to do these sexually things they shouldn't, they would have these diseases that, that they would have to go through this process. And sometimes healing would come and sometimes it wouldn't. And it would be a, you know, a long time before they could actually come into the fellowship of God. But now it's talking about something a little bit different. Beginning in verse 16 of chapter 15 Leviticus, we go into another topic, similar but different. And it says that if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash his, his flesh with water and be unclean until that evening. Now, what is this? I want to go into this. Uh, let, let's read the next scripture verse first. And every garment and every skin whereupon the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and shall be clean until evening. And so it, it, this copulation literally means it, it is climaxing, is, is, is having... Um, sperm come out and there is an issue again that's that's released from the person um, there's places in the bible it talks about this that even at night 
it could happen unwilling, you know, without without willingness. It just happens. You have you have imaginations or you have dreams, and and because of this, you end up, you know, having having an issue come out. It said from that perspective, you're unclean till the night to clean yourself. And again, this is very similar. We're going to get into again. I'm trying not. I'm trying to let you know. I forewarned you. It's a little graphic, but but with when it comes to to masturbation and things of that nature, it can be imaginary. It can be again a dream, if you will, that you then do something like this. You're you're unclean in God's eyes to come into His presence. There's there's um, a, a a time when issue has come out of your body that's of the flesh from vain imaginations and it's not in the spirit of God right God God desires us to, to have holy he says that the marriage bed should be kept holy and clean and yet our imaginations can run wild even Paul says that if if you know you you are married don't hold back giving yourselves to one another only for a season otherwise lust will stir up in you right and these things will come and yet there is this season of unclean this this uncleanness or getting right again in our minds with God this is the problem is we have minds that they can run mm -hmm. crazy right they're filled with sin they're filled with lust and so we have to be careful and make sure that we're constantly cleansing our mind and our heart and and yet we are going to fail and yet there is this time that the Lord forgives you it it's but get right Get your hearts right. Why are we in the Word of God? To have our minds washed. The Bible tells us in the Scriptures, you know, you husbands, wash your wife, bathe her in the Word of God. Similarly, pastors, wash the church with the Word of God. Wash one another in the Word of God so that we can get our minds fixed and drawn back on God, bringing Him in the situation. Now, was God watching all of these people, the Israelites at the time, when this, all these things were happening? Yes, He sees everything. Does he watch when we're in our, you know, home and we're doing whatever we're doing in our imagination? Yes, he sees it all. And yet he wants to make a way, and he has made a way, that we can come into his holy presence again and again and again. Now we know that God is spirit, it says in John 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And so there's this dying to the flesh and raising in the spirit and there's this time of making sure we're in the spirit be you continually filled with the spirit of god now these things that we're learning about are of the flesh right when we when we die eventually and go to heaven the bible says that you're neither there's neither male nor female and they're neither given into marriage we are the bride of christ married to christ we are he's our husband so the marriage is just a shadow so these things that we're doing now as the lord is has called a man to leave his leave his mother leave his father cleave to his wife and the two shall become one is to have children but also the enjoyment of a male with a female together if it wasn't for that case then god would not have made it pleasurable right the problem is is when we attach something wrong or evil or vain imagination or worse a god some false gods to this act that was meant for a, a husband and a wife to to procreate and have children so so of course there's a time of when we need to get right with god and i'm telling you the church is not doing what it needs to do and is falling apart a lot and has division and has pain and has sickness among it because people are not taking this seriously and they don't understand that because of this there's going to be consequences it doesn't mean God's not going to cleanse you. He hasn't made a way to cleanse it, but get quick back to the Lord as quickly as possible. Amen. It's like in this case, there was a wait till you wash and then wait till the night. There's an uncleanness. But, you know, the first precept was sexually transmitted disease. The second one is sexual emissions through through vain imaginations or or um, through your your mind. And yet now we have so many things that are constantly hitting our sub, subconscious with the Satan trying to control us and get us over there eventually to what? To create the golden bowl, create the botchery, and to do these things to divide against God. Why? Because we think God's not there. Isn't that the same reason Israel did it? So this is, this is what's happening. This is a time when, when the Lord has given a way for the Israelites to cleanse and, and get out of this and continually, by the way. So let's go ahead and continue on in our scripture verses. It says, it's not, not only is that person unclean, and this is the thing we have to understand, when we get in and we delve into the flesh, no matter what nature of it it is, there's going to be consequences, not just for you, but for others. It says in the woman in verse 18, also with whom the man shall lie with his seed in copulation, they shall both be, 
bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the evening. If the woman had, okay, so we're going to stop there. So, so what it's saying here is the intent is always that a man would be married to a wife and that they would copulate. But there is times when we see in the Bible when David had many concubines and other wives, and it, which is strange. I, I know that that was never God's intent. It was always one, one man, one woman, one wife, one husband. And yet we see that Solomon had, had 300 concubines and 700 wives. And wow. for whatever reason, God allowed this. And so as we look at this, this sin of having sex outside of marriage, we see that for whatever reason, God has allowed it, but he doesn't condone it. Do you understand? He knows our frailties. He understands, and he's made a way for us to repent and to repent quickly. But he wants us to recognize him as God before we come into his presence always. We should cleanse ourselves. We should make sure that we have the right heart. When we come to church, you know, it's... I said, you see me now wearing a tie. And it's not that I, I believe you need to wear a tie. I, the Lord says, come as you are. But I want to outwardly show what inwardly is happening before I come to church, before I come and preach, before I come to this Bible study to teach. I am asking the Lord to cleanse me. I am asking the Lord to dress me in his attire. I am asking the Lord to clothe me in white and, and, and forgive me my trespasses. We should be doing this daily but all the more when we're coming into the holy presence of God, as we said, where two or more are gathered, there he is in their midst. There's a special time of fellowship that we should be coming into. And this time of cleansing ourselves from the world and our thoughts, our vain imaginations, again and again, as many times as it takes. Amen? We want to come to God with a clear mind and a clear conscience. And because of Christ, we can. And so, okay, now we go into the next issue. And, and, and the one thing, even in marriage, by the way, Paul said, hold yourselves for a season. So there is a time not to take the, the, the sexual pleasure that we have and become an addiction, even with your own wife. I knew a friend, again, graphic, sorry, who, who had a, an addiction to, to, to um, pornography. And he said, you know, what I'm going to do to solve this is every night I'm going to take my wife and I'm going to have sex with her. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't think that's the intent here. The intent is to have the right heart. The intent isn't to, to use one another for your sexual gratifications and, and, and just go crazy you know, and go against God. No, the intent is to make it holy, but, but also to draw to God, to be in the spirit as much as possible. We're not to just use this as kind of like a, a, a drug, another drug, right? And we can, and, and people do, and we have trouble in the world because of that. This is why advertisers are using this to use the people and control the people and get them to buy their products. They use sex for that reason. So, so anyways, this is something that's important. So now we're going to get into another uncleanness. So what's the other uncleanness? And this is what we'll close out with is, is it says in verse 19, and if a woman have issue and her issue in the flesh be blood, and she has put apart seven days. So what is this? Period. This is, uh, yes, obviously this is menstruation. This is a woman who has to menstruate. Now what is menstruation? Menstruation is God's natural um, um, process that he's allowed, again, since the fall, most likely, because there's pain in it. And we know that there's pain in childbirthing and stuff like this. This is part of the curse. This is part of the punishment from the original sin. Okay, well, so, so there's blood being shed. But what is blood? Blood is always the, the, the life. But there's a cleansing process and this life leaving. And remember, anytime there's issue leaving, that this could be an unclean thing that, that's happening. And we know that in the Bible, it talks about our works and how we try to be righteous in and of ourselves and do good things. And yet every one of us, it says in Romans, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And what the Bible tells us is that, that, that um, even our best works, graphic, sorry, God's word, is like a menstrual rag, is like a filthy rag. Even our best attempts at righteousness to be cleansed of ourselves would be like a filthy rag. Um, so it says that she shall put apart seven days, whosoever touches her um, shall be unclean until the evening, and, and everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. Remember, they didn't have a lot of the stuff we have today for women. So just keep it in mind for cleanliness and a lot of stuff. So this was kind of a messy affair. And, and it says that, um, and whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be unclean until the evening. 
and if it be on her bed or any thing thereon she sitteth where he toucheth it shall be unclean until the evening and if if any man lieth with her at all her flowers upon him uh, he shall be unclean for seven days and shall uh, and all the bed wherein he lieth shall be unclean again there's this possibility of transmission of, of disease and things like that that can happen during this time especially during this time um, again, part of, part of the reason, again, graphic, I'm so sorry. I, I'm sorry and I'm not. I can't be ashamed of the word of God. But the Lord says he doesn't like um, sodomy. He doesn't like, you know, that this goes completely against God. Why? Because that tissue is very soft and, and sensitive. It can rip and blood can shed. And so similarly, you, the blood can get into this act. What's not supposed to be there during the act is supposed to be a natural thing. And so if there's blood there, you're not supposed to have intercourse. The husband and the wife are supposed to stay apart during this time, and for for health reasons, but also for the cleanliness of the body reasons, as we're as we're learning here. And so, if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of separation, mm -hmm. this is, this means it's like the woman who had you know issue for many years. She would be separated, and, and she grabbed Jesus's garment out of faith, and he said, "Who touched me?" Right, and so he healed her immediately from this separation. But it says. Uh, blood of many days out of the time of separation or if it run beyond the time of separation all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation she shall be unclean so she's unclean the entire time she's having these period this period I'm... every every bed whereon she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation and whosoever sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation and and whosoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be unclean till the evening and again there was no sexual relations it was just you touched the blood and so wash yourself cleanse yourself and until the evening at least and then you're and then you're clean again but if she be cleansed of her issue then she shall number herself seven days. So after the blood stops, then seven days wait. And now um, you can go be cleansed. It says on the eighth day, you shall take the two turtle doves, the two, the two pigeons, two turtles, or two young pigeons. I never noticed that it said turtles there. I, was, I always thought turtle doves. Strangely, we went to we went to a park and saw like 20, 30 turtles laying eggs this week. Mm. So I was like, did that just say two turtles? Yeah, it does. So I don't know why I never noticed that. So two turtles or two pigeons and bring them to the priest at the door of the tabernacle congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord of the issues for her uncleanness thus shall you separate the children of israel so this is the children of israel's laws right we're not doing these things now this is different we fall under the law of grace the law of dispensation the law of love we fall under the sacrifice of our lord jesus christ who fulfilled these laws right and it says shall shall ye separate the, the children of israel for her uncleanness that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle, which is among them. So this is God's temple. You've been bought with a price, you're not your own. This is God's temple, and we're to keep it holy, and we're to continually come and wash and bathe ourselves in the words of God with forgiveness. He says he's faithful and just to forgive us if we confess our sins, right? Mm -hmm. and, and as far as the east is from the west, he cleanses us from any of these things. So, so we want to continually do that, continually be in an attitude of, of prayer and confession and um verse 32 says this is the law of him that hath an issue and him that whose seed goeth from him and is defiled and by the way this is one of the few places in the scriptures that specifically talks about masturbation and sex of of, of issue with a man just so you know there's only one other place which is taken out of context oftentimes and and this is um in Genesis chapter 38 and it talks of Onan knew that his seed should not be his and it came to pass when he went 
to his brother's wife because he had died and because he died it's his responsibility to continue the name of his brother and he was to come upon his brother's wife and bear her a child and so it says when he went into his brother's wife so he had relations with her that he spilled it on the ground he came he pulled out of her before he orgasmed when he was supposed to make her have a baby he pulled out and spilled it onto the ground and it says that his seed should not uh, that he should not give his seed to his brother and the thing which he did displeased the lord wherewith he slew him so this was a serious offense right the lord take that very serious many take this scripture out of context the issue here was that he was rejecting the family of his brother and not giving her a child which was a blessing to her and to continue the the, the name of his brother not that the seed spilled on the ground. So people take this out of context. That's not that was not the intent of the scripture. Yet let's not an excuse to to um, to enter into vain imagination and pleasure yourself uncontrollably in, in addiction and making it your God. Everything we've talked about here. But I wanted to make sure that that you notice that that there's these are some of the few scripture verses that are in the Bible, and this is one of the chapters that deal with that. Uh, okay. So continuing on, it says in the the final. Scripture verse of Leviticus 15. And of her that is sick of the flowers, or in her, her menstrual cycle, and of him that hath issue, the man the man and the woman, and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. We did it. We went six minutes over. But um, very, very important, <laughs> a very hard issue, but important issue. And I, and I don't think something that should be glossed over. And I think very critical this is something that you may painstakingly have gone through, but I, I'm here to say, if you are caught in these things, look at the severity of it. Look at how God asks us to be clean, to be holy, to, to hold off for the marriage bed, and yet to keep that marriage bed holy and clean. Okay. And when we come to God, we're to come to him in the cleanliness and the washing and the sacrifices that Christ Jesus has made for us continually. But this sin in particular is a very serious sin. The Bible says all other sins are outside the body. But where is this issue coming from? Inside. inside the body. This sin is against the temple of God, against his place, his holy ground. So let's keep it holy and let's remember that to keep it holy and, and, to, and to honor God when we come. You don't have to wear ties when you come to church. I'm just saying make sure you're making yourself right when we come before the Lord, and we should be coming before him all the time, but especially in the fellowships, especially in the time of, of church, as the Lord's called us to come together. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Amen. And yeah, we can answer questions after. <laughs> Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, thank you for this incredible word. Thank you for making a provision for the lusts and, and for the things that are within us that are against you, Lord God. May we not drag them into your temple. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us, Lord. Give us strength, give us power um, to, to walk upright. Fill us with your spirit, that we would walk in the spirit as you are spirit. Lord, give us the light, that we would be lights into this world. And Lord, help us to respect and honor your children and your women and your men. And Lord, not to treat them as objects. And Lord, when we have issued the quickly, Lord, repent and come to you in the way that you've provided for us to be clean through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.